Welcome to Think Out for Your Imagination. This podcast is about the imagination of me, Jennifer Purcell, and other neurodivergents and neurotypicals, and how our imagination is still vivid because we are neurodivergent, and about my imagination I used to have when I was little, and bringing it to life and sharing it with you. I hope that you enjoy this first episode and that you will be inspired to email me if you want to be interviewed about your imagination that you had when you were little. I will put my email in the podcast description for you. Good evening, and tonight's episode will be about what drives our imagination and where do we get our inspiration for our imagination. Comparing neurodivergence imagination to neurotypical <clears throat> Today we will explore what drives our imagination and where we look for inspiration to create it. I look to movies, TV shows, and books to drive and inspire my imagination. Where do you look for inspiration and what drives your imagination? Let's look at some articles that define what imagination is and where it comes from. Here's an article titled, How Our Imagination is Formed by Siebel Wonders. Quote, In fact, human brains often use information stored in memories to come up with the things people imagine. If you've been wondering with us for a while, you know how memories are stored. When a person is drifting off into a daydream, brains use their those memories to help power the imagination, end quote. Sometimes I do daydream, or zone out, as some people call it. This usually happens when I'm running, because I get so into it. I think that it is cool that people who are neurodivergent still have vivid imaginations because they are more innocent, naive, than neurotypicals. Here's an article titled, Autistic Imagination by Lynn autism blog. Quote, what is imagination? It's the ability to think up scenarios, settings, possibilities, and things. Autistics are completely able to do this, yet the myth persists that autism means impaired or absent imagination. There has been a grave misunderstanding of the fact that it's social imagination that is impaired. Social imagination is basically the ability to empathize with others and predict their intentions. It has nothing to do with the rich internal mind of the individual. Social imagination deficits are, of course, an impairment. This deficit is what makes autistics struggle socially in friendships, communication, and keeping themselves safe." End quote. So that is also true for people with NLD, and um, I've worked on that challenge many in many ways in terms of trying to um, make it easier for me to um, read body language and be able to understand um, body cues and um, facial expressions and... Um, you know, tone of voice and things like that. And I would say that it this does kind of relate to imagination because if you think about it, if you are listening to or watching somebody tell a story and it's hard for you to read their nonverbal language, then how are you going to understand that story? You know what I mean? Next article is titled, How Does Visual Thinking Work in the Mind of a Person with Autism? A a Personal Account by Temple Grandin. Quote, my mind is similar to an internet search engine that searches for photographs. I use language to narrate the photorealistic pictures that pop up in my imagination. When I design equipment for the cattle industry, I can test run it in my imagination similar to a virtual reality computer program. 
all my thinking is associative and not linear. To form concepts, I sort pictures into categories similar to computer files to form the concept of um, orange. I see many different orange objects such as oranges, pumpkins, orange juice, and marmalade. I have observed that there are three different specialized autistic or Asperger cognitive types. Um, they are one, visual thinkers, such as I who are often poor at algebra. Two, pattern thinkers, such as Daniel Tamit, who excel in math and music, but may have problems with reading or writing composition. And three, verbal specialists who are good at talking and writing, but they lack visual skills, end quote. So for me, um, I th was trying to read back over that quote a little bit and figure out w what kind of thinker I am. I th I would probably say I'm more of a verbal specialist than a pattern or a um, visual thinker because I know that it's um, easy for me to um, talk and um, but it's hard for me to write. Um, and I do lack visual skills in terms of um, you know I'm, I'm good at creative writing but I'm not very good at academic writing and my visual skills I lack in, lack in are with um, driving and um, trying to navigate the visual world of um, reading and designing uh, things like that um, excuse me I'm got better at music um, in terms of, um, I mean, I just listen to music and I sing to it. I don't play any instruments. Um, but I definitely got better at math in terms of understanding the patterns and trying to um, do basic math. Um, and I'm not very visual thinker. I'm definitely auditory and um, I was poor at algebra. I'm better at it than I used to be. Uh, so the last article is titled, Do People with Autism Often Have Vivid Imaginations? By Wendy Stone, who has a PhD um, and is a director at Mario Autism Research Institute and a professor of pediatrics, Vanderbilt University. Dr. Stone answers the question, Vivid Imaginations with Autism. Quote, question, do people with autism often have vivid imaginations? Answer, it's very difficult to tell how imaginative a person is. Imagination is something that is internal. It's something that's in somebody's head. The way we measure it is when we see how it's expressed behaviorally. We do know that young people, sorry, young children with autism often do not display a great deal of creativity in their play. We think of imagination, yeah, we think of imagination, we think of doing different things. You're playing out roles, you're pretending different things, you change your behavior according to the situation. It's spontaneous, it's flexible. And these are not typical characteristics of children with autism, especially at young ages, end quote. So I would say that for people with NLD, um, at least for me when I was young, um, I did feel like I had a pretty vivid imagination. And um, I think this is where it might differ a little bit from people with autism because um, I was able to, uh, not saying people with autism don't have an imagination. I'm just um, saying from my experience with NLD, um, I definitely have a very vivid imagination of being able to think about the world of Maria, Mar Mar Maria Marissa Marcia. Sorry, that's hard to say. Um, 
but that was the world I created and was able to um, just play around in and have fun with. And um, I still sometimes go back to that, even though I'm 26 years old and, you know, adults usually don't pretend and play around um, like children do, but I still do sometimes. It's fun. Um, so I hope you learned something new about the imagination of neurotypicals versus neurodivergence today. I hope that this week's episode of Think Out for Your Imagination brought new ideas to your mind and reminded you of when you were little and would imagine and pretend and play with your friends or yourself and create games in your mind and you know just be just be a kid and have fun and you know what it's like to dream it and do that and be able to um be a little kid again and you know believe in things like fairy tales and mermaids and um wonderful creatures I will talk to you next Thursday.